It was 1931, and I was 10 years old, and my brother Bradley was five. We didn't know it then, but it was the height of the Depression. We also didn't know that we were poor. My father worked 12 hours at the print shop, and my mother did piecework for the factory sewing caps. And my job was to take care of Bradley. Language so crazy makes me upside down. Have questions. What's this, Mr. Petrakis? Oh, Bradley, you never see radio before? No. Oh, it's great new invention. Wait, he's playing music. You see, right? And, ah, no, I, I find music. Wait, wait, wait. There's music, huh? <laughs> also, talk to you. Right, I'll show you. I find talk. Ah, just talk. One million dollar shipyard fire today. Believe it was the work of There's nobody back there. Nobody inside. Come from here. Meeting of the International Chamber of Commerce, gathering in Washington. Work for economic rehabilitation. Oh, it's good for to learn English. Learn English? Oh, sure. Like this, I study English, so people they know laugh at me. People laugh at you? Oh, sure. People laugh at me because uh, I talk different. You know, I, when I talk, it's funny, so it's different. But you're not different. No, I, I'm not different. I, I same as you, you same as me, but it's when I talk, it's... What's difference? I'm different. Thank you, Mr. Richard. You're welcome, Margaret. Oh, Margaret! You change. My change? Sure. Business is business. 
Thank you, Mr. Petrakis. Smile for a rainy day. Oh, Papa. Right place. Yes. I got orders to pick up a sewing machine. He wants machine. He has orders. Mama's machine. She needs machine. She works home. No machine. No food. Yeah, look, I'm sorry, Lee. I'm sorry, but the union says that from now on everybody works out in the mill. Huh? Tell me. No more homework, Mama. Everyone has to work. In the mail. Papa wants to know who tells you this. The boss says, kid, look, the boss says it's a union decision. Now tell him I'm late already, huh? The boss. Union decision. Okay, excuse me.
We need a box, a dead box. <laughs> we could sell you just a box, but that isn't what you really want. Now, obviously, you love the boy, so you want a satin-lined coffin, a lovely funeral. Hmm? He wants to sell us a satin box. What is she saying? We have no money. We have ten dollars only for a dead box. Ten dollars. Ten dollars. Wasn't a child worth more to you than that? What kind of people are you? What kind of people are you? Papa is a printer. Mama sews. <sighs> All right. Over here. Is this what you want? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth. My life changed is. the day my brother died. Give us this day our daily bread. The joy in our hearts, our like the noise and the laughter in our rooms, was gone. Those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. I was alone but now in the world of silence. My voice was the only voice of the family. The power and the glory forever. And over the years, my words made it possible for Mom and Papa to live in the hearing world. Amen. You see this radio and newspaper? My great graduation gift, you eh? You haven't finished this. Uh, I, I'm never going to finish fractions. <laughs> fractions, I don't understand. I'm sometimes a uh, little number on top, sometimes big number on top. <laughs> I, I, look, fractions is a piece of something, no? Yes. Put piece back into fraction, something's always left over. I don't understand. You have to read the book. You have to memorize the rules. No, no, no. I too old to memorize rules, no. I, I, an old man, I have teeth. That's what I have. Oh, gosh. Isn't this a beauty? Oh. When I saw this, I left it on Papa's plate this morning, you know. Mm -hmm. Graduation, graduation. <laughs> so, hmm. You are grow old friend here, eh? Oh, never. Remember how we used to listen to it to learn the words we didn't know? Oh, sure. This is my English teacher. He's a good English teacher. Mm -hmm. Yet, uh, in school, they, they push him back all year. Why? It's because I think in sign. My first language is different than English. It's um, pictures, not words. I understand that more better than I understand English. It's all mixed up crazy. You understand everything except fractions. Oh, no, no, no. That's not fair, not fair. Margaret, you know, in Greece... Ah, oh, nice try. Party. You oh, have them oh. done by tomorrow. No, 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 no. I never sell one fraction here. I never sell one fraction. Too much. That was a great idea. I'm looking for it. Yeah? 
want to come to the prom with me? What? Dad says I can use his car. I'll come by and pick no, you up. No, I can't. I mean, I'm... Thank you for asking me, but... Um, I'm... I'm... Yeah. Okay. Are you crazy? You said what? no to Neil Swenson? Why, Margaret? about that before. The sunshine is silent when it falls. Hmm? No sound at all. And it's silent. Yeah, sunshine is death. Well, I have a little problem. See that? All the girls are buying graduation dresses. I don't know how to ask Mama and not hurt her feelings. She wants to make me a dress. Something special. But all my friends are getting store-bought dresses. And Papa, I want to be just like everyone else. You know? Can you talk with Mama tonight? After we tell her about your promotion, she'll be in a good mood. No. <sighs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Margaret! Hi, Neil! No. They're just some kids from school. We'll talk to them tomorrow. Thank you, Mom. I think it's wonderful, too, about Papa. And I want to talk to you about something. I know you're making me a dress for graduation. And I'm sure it's beautiful. All my friends are getting store-bought dresses. I know they're expensive, but Esther Cohen's father sells wholesale. And Esther says that he can give us a deal. Deal means he won't charge us the full price. It doesn't mean we're beggars. Mom. It doesn't mean we're beggars. People do this all the time. Yes. There's nothing wrong with doing what my friends are doing. I don't want to look different, Mama. Why do you say I'm different? Because my friend's parents are hearing? And you and Papa aren't? My friends don't know you and Papa are deaf. No one at school knows that. I'm not ashamed of you and Mama. 
I just don't want anyone treating me as different. Because I'm not different. She says she wants to go back to work. Her heart sounds okay. The doctor says she seems all right. He's a doctor. <laughs> you go back to work. I'll take care of Mama. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Why does she faint? Did she eat today? Not since this morning. Well, no wonder she fainted. We keep these places like sweat boxes and she hasn't eaten. Ask her when was the date of her last period. change your life. She doesn't want her life to change. She likes her life. The way it is. Take her home. Make sure she rests. Oh. For months, months I go by and don't have one suit in store. This afternoon, bingo. Three suits walk in by themselves. You've got four mistakes on this page and alone. one suit. Oh, it's beautiful, huh? Look at this. It's blue. Blue suit. I go nowhere. What? You see this suit? 100% blue search. 100%. Yes, sir. No fooling around with this. Of course, it's not perfect, but then again, world is not perfect, huh? Mm. Ah, do you like it, huh? What's the suit for? What suit for? What's the matter with you? Your graduation. I'm not going to come to your graduation dressed like bomb. <laughs> oh, I wish it was over. You wish it was over. Huh? Mm, you know, in Greece, graduation is it's time for big celebration. Oh, lots of food, lots of uzo, lots of presents. Papa's buying me a radio. Oh, did he tell you about presents? Oh, no, he didn't tell me my gift, but he did say that it was electrical uh, and that it was for hearing. Uh, so I figure, you know. So this is happy time for you, no? 
Yeah. You're going into a whole new big world. I suppose so. Yeah. Margaret, you, you young woman now. You beautiful young woman. <laughs> you have wonderful time ahead for you. And most important, you're smart. Be happy for life. Don't be shy for life. I'm not. Uh, all these years, I, I never see you with friends. I have no friends. <laughs> you know, bring them around here. I see my friends a lot. They just, they don't come around here because I don't know. It's, it's awkward for Mom and Papa. I don't want them to feel left out. Oh. So they don't mix, so you don't mix, eh? Hmm. They don't trust hearing. You mean they don't trust nobody who hears? Not, well, it's called, how do I explain? When they first moved to the city, hmm. a man sold them a car for $50. Uh. Um, he knew they were deaf. They didn't understand about down payments. The financing company took them to court on charges of fraud. I spent 11 years paying for a car they owned maybe two weeks. That's one example of 100. I mean, this is their life experience. This all right, all right, Margaret. What? All right. That explains their fears. But you, you're not deaf, Margaret. You have chance to They need me. It's not easy around hearing. It's, um, it's not easy to read lips. People mumble, they turn away when they talk, they um, All right, mutter. It, but it, it, it's no easy for you, too. Margaret, I see your pain. I thought you understood. I do understand. I understand that they talk through you, that they hear through you. And you, you, you only their voice, their ears. Where's your life? Your happiness. One foot in one world, other foot in another world. There is no balance. For happiness, you have to have balance. Happiness have to come from. Oh, oh I stupid. I really, I really stupid. I try to be philosopher like Socrates. And I, I'm just all Greek and in pawn shop. I Margaret. Margaret. Very beautiful, Mama. Thank you.
What is that? My graduation gift? Why, why are you wearing a hearing aid? Can you really hear with it? If it just hurts your head, if it doesn't let you hear, why don't you take it off? Why are you wearing it for me? So you won't, so you won't look deaf? In front of my friends? You've heard all about me. I'm the smart friend. Esther. Oh, they can't. you're never going to believe what my parents got me. Look at that. That is a real Hamilton. That's brand new. Oh, it's brand not new. second hand or anything. Beautiful. Oh, hey, my grandmother has one of those. But it doesn't work too well. We end up having to yell at her all of the time. They can't hear you. They're deaf. You mean they can't hear anything? No. No sounds? No music? No Sorry. voices? No. Oh, that's awful. That's so sad. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Jobs were not easy to find, but I was lucky. Within a month after graduation, I was working as a receptionist with a small business. Oh. Something wrong? Okay. Whose house is this? Our house? What? Oh, all right, can you afford to buy a house? Papa, you saved all that? Yeah. It's enough for a good down payment? Yeah. You and Mama want me to have my own room. My own room. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I'll make some calls. Thank you. Me too. Me too. OK. Thank you. Oh. No, no, Mr. Brother. Mr. Rulliger would like to see me uh, late next week, so uh, I'll have to call you on Monday, let you know my schedule. All right, Mr. Anglin, Monday? William, please. William? <laughs> Did they ever let you out for lunch at this place? I'm usually too busy. And too busy for dinner? Absolutely. Well, they, uh, you do eat after work, right? Maybe you cook. Listen to some music? Maybe dance? You ever heard of any of this? No. Great, you're a hard worker. You can afford me. So, when do I pick you up? And where? No, really, I can't. You married? No. Be <laughs> Please. Now, don't say no again. Say, uh, say maybe Friday. Maybe next week. Maybe sometime. Don't break my heart. No. <laughs> well, that looks better. Oh, <laughs> hello there, working woman. How are you doing in the world today? Well, I'm not exactly a threat to the Rockefellers yet, but I'm all right. <laughs> 
My books inside, they all messed up. Upside down, backwards, I don't know no more. Hey. I miss you, Rafael. Oh, yeah. What happened to your radio? Oh, so radio? Oh, radio, I, I fix it, I sell it. What? Oh, sure, I have to make a living, you know, these days. Oh. Sale is sale. Yeah, I have surprise but... for you. I have surprise okay. for you. Okay. All right, you close your eyes? Yes. Okay. All right, Closed. All right. Open up. Oh. Happy oh. graduation. For you. For me? Oh, sure. It's yours. <laughs> oh, really? It's all yours. Oh, my gosh. Oh, it's not much. I take money from this pocket, put in this pocket. Sale is sale. Happy graduation. It's yours, please. Oh. Oh, that's I nice. I can't believe it. gift from Mr. Petrakis. It's the news. It's Churchill about the war. Now. I'm listening to music. I'm tapping my fingers to the beat. Beat means. Radio, the music stops. You know the hat. Why do you say it doesn't belong here? You don't want it to belong here. Papa understands how much the radio means to me. Why can't you? Mama? Mama? What? I'm not yelling. I'm sorry.
They like it. Well, good. Uh, I, uh, I, I don't want to be rude, but this is my first time around the deaf and dumb. They're deaf, but not dumb. Oh, sorry. You don't have to whisper. Oh, right, yeah. Well, I was wondering if financially your parents can afford something like this house. Uh, they have a job, right? Uh, 22 years, yes. Oh, amazing. And, and they're able to function, read and write, to sign legal contracts? Well, I hope you weren't going to ask them to sign illegal contracts. Oh, no. Oh, no. Absolutely not. We disrupt this program for a special news announcement. The Japanese have attacked Pearl Harbor. I repeat, President Roosevelt has announced that the Japanese have attacked Pearl Harbor from the air. Army and Navy personnel Wait. on the Pacific Coast and the Atlantic areas have been asked to report Where's to their stations, Pearl air bases, and ships Harbor? at once. NBC's outlet both... Hello, Maggie. Mr. Angler, everyone's gone for lunch. Would you like me to make an appointment for later? Well, I won't be here later. I enlisted. Really? My train leaves at 1.30 for basic training. I thought I'd drop in and say goodbye to Rilliger. <laughs> well, he'll be sorry he missed you. And you? I'm sorry you're going. But I'm proud of you. Would you like to have a bite to eat with me? Uh, coffee and donuts or something. It, it doesn't have to... It doesn't have to be a date. I, I said goodbye to, to everybody already. I don't have anything to do till 1.30. Please. All right. Great. Whatever possessed you to sign up? Over there. Over there. I don't know. Um, patriotism. Fight for freedom. See the world. I don't know. My father fought magnificently in the, in the last war. This is a multiple choice answer. Well, I hope you don't intend to die magnificently. I hope you're going to be here when I come home. Might be. Um, you want a cigarette? No, I don't smoke. Neither do I. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you mind if I write you? You don't have to. Oh. <laughs> I know I don't have to, but if I do, will you write me back? Well, if your letters are as funny as you are, yeah. Oh, God! Oh. 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 Same difference. They all fight for us. So, what your parents think about him? They haven't met him. Huh? I mean, they know we write each other, but Mom can't understand why I'm getting so much mail from someone who's really a stranger. <laughs> We've been writing for a month, so I feel like I've known him for years. So, well, you tell him about Mama and Papa? He doesn't know they're deaf. Well, don't you think you tell him? Well, it's not like we're serious or anything. Anyway. This is my life here. Mom and Papa can't function without me. Oh, and you? 
You can function just with mama and papa. <coughs> <laughs> Mama says in the springtime she wants to start to grow you vegetables oh. and bring them to you to eat. <laughs> <laughs> you, you grow vegetables? Oh, tell her to grow uh, 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 aniseed. I use aniseed. Yeah, grow aniseed. I make mix up, I make ouzo. We have, oh, we have big party. Drink ouzo, have plenty of fun. Oh. <laughs> All right. She wants to thank you for helping us move. It's no trouble. You My are pleasure. always welcome to our home. I know this without saying. I don't have to hear. Things when when come how you say heart? Just make a heart. Uh, when things when come from heart, no have to say, no have to hear. I know. Thank you. Okay, everybody move in. Good. All right. When they know where everything is, then they get more comfortable, because then they feel they, they buy more home. You, you know? make them happy. Ah, uh, it's my pleasure. Yes, sir. Okay. I'll come visit you. Oh, sure you come visit me. <laughs> and I'm going to be there. Where else Petraka's going to be except pawn shop? <laughs> That's true. You take care of yourself now. I'm going to miss you. Uh, Margaret. Magnus, you do me a big favor, please. I want you, you write your soldier fella, you tell him about Mama Papa. Find out now what kind of man he is. He'll be home soon, I'll tell him then. <laughs> Margaret, Magnus, child. <laughs> My best thing about you is thing you know like about yourself. You're different. Be proud you're different. Everybody else, they, they say words. You, you know feelings, power behind words. That's different. That's your different, huh? And never, never hide these. Your hands, why are you ashamed of hands? They're beautiful. <laughs> when they speak, they're like angels. And they say truth. I know, I watch, I see, I laugh. That's different. That's why you're different. <laughs> you never listen. Say. No, no, no. No, what did I say? It's late. 
have to be at work in the morning. I have to go. What is it? Come on, Maggie, what is it? What is it? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Everything's just happening so fast, I can't think. He's asking you to think. <laughs> Light on. How about if I meet your folks? It's late. They're asleep. Maggie, I'm in love with you, and you, and you keep shutting the door. Why? I, th I thought you felt the same way. I do. It's just that I'm... I want to marry you, Maggie. If you shut any more doors on me, I'm just going to have to kick them in. Mama, it's late. You didn't have to wait up for me. What? Is Mama angry because it's so late? It was a good night kiss. William's special to me. I know you haven't met him yet, but he's been to camp. I don't know when you'll get to meet him. Soon, Papa, right? He's busy with his family now. I really like him. Why can't you just be happy for me? Get back. We ship out tomorrow. Italy. Oh, I wasn't supposed to tell anybody. I thought we had more time. I'm awfully glad to have met you. Oh, thank you. William has talked of nothing else. Oh, let's say that again. I hope you come by the house. Love to get to know you better. Yes, I will. Well, thank you. Yeah, we can show you some of William's baby fingers. Oh. <laughs> so, Mom, you're not, you're not gonna, you're not gonna worry about me too much. You know I'm gonna be careful, right? I won't worry right? about you. Okay, you look after Maggie. Okay. Right. And please stop. I will. <laughs> look just like your father in your uniform. Wish you were here to see you. So proud of you. Shoot first, okay? Okay. You take care of mom. Well, come on. Love you, mom. Come on. I don't want to 
to say goodbye to you like this at some train station. I love you, Maggie. I, I want us to get married. I want you to be my wife, Maggie. I can't. There's something I have to tell you Look, first. Look, I didn't want it to be this way either. My parents are deaf, William. Is that it? Is that all? Oh, Maggie, is this why I, I couldn't need them? I didn't want them? you to pity them, or me. Oh, I love you, and I didn't want you to feel... Do you actually think it would make any difference at all? Does it? Marry me. Come with me right now. I, we have the whole night in Boston before I have to report to the ship. What do you say? Maggie. I'm sorry this happened the way it did. William got last minute orders. And he asked me to marry him. I couldn't phone you. This is the happiest time of my life. Please share it with me. We'll say something. We didn't sneak away, and I'm not ashamed of my parents. I told him you were deaf. It doesn't matter to him. We didn't want to wait. You and Mama were younger than I am when you got married. Why is it wrong? William and I love each other. Then we got married. There's nothing wrong with what we did. Maybe just the way we did it, all right? He wants to meet you. He wants his mother to meet you. I told him you'd invite them to dinner. Yes. Mama, would 
you stop being so stubborn? It's late. They're gonna be here any minute, and I don't want them to catch us in the middle of a fight. How can you go through this entire evening if you refuse to sign? It's gonna look like you have nothing to say to them. No one will laugh at you. Signing is your language. I will talk to her. Make her understand. You're not signing either. Oh, great. All right, fine. Do what you want. Lip read if that makes you feel better. I give up. They're here. They're here. We're a little late. I'm sorry. I'm not. It was perfect timing. Oh, good. Good to see you again. It's good to see you too. Um, come in. Um, Mama, Papa, this is my mother and father. This is Mrs. Anglin. Hello. And William's brother Hello. Donald. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Are allowed to call me Claire. Uh, of course, Claire. <laughs> Something smells delicious. What do I smell? Turkey or chicken? Chicken. Chicken. Oh. Yes. Well, I help you with Yes, thank you, dear. Oh, my, this is a simply lovely house you have here. I think it's about time we got to see. Would you like to come in and sit down? Oh, I think dinner's yes. nearly ready. Uh, oh, hello. Miss Anglin. Thank you. And Donald. Claire. Claire, that's right. Thank you. Thank you. Papa? Mrs. Anglin was just saying how lovely our home is. Thank you. Yes, so lovely. It's pretty flowers. Oh, what a lovely table. Thank you. Oh, please let me. Oh, no. I'm sorry. Should be helping. I'll be right back. Thank you. More potatoes, please. Potatoes. No, oh, potatoes. Anybody care for some more? No, thanks. What are they doing? What? In the kitchen. What are they doing? Um. They're discussing. My father wants to offer brandy after the meal. And my mother thinks maybe it's. Brandy is fine. You've had enough potatoes, for heaven's sakes. Know how embarrassing this is. Everyone was watching you in the mirror. No one is judging you. It's not easy for them either. You're always saying the world only knows you as deaf. But you never get a chance to show them who you really are. Well, these people came here because they want to know you. And now you're hiding from them. They don't understand death because they've never been around them before. Give them a chance to learn. No one will make fun of anybody. We're family now. 
They have death in the family now. My father wants to make a speech. He'll use sign language. It's his first language. When hearing have a child and she grows up, becomes a woman and gets married, the parents cry because they know she's leaving and they know they'll be lonely for her. When deaf parents have a child, and she grows up in the hearing world and gets married. They don't cry. The beloved child leaves the house of the deaf. And with her, their voices are taken away. And for this, tears are not enough. I tell you this because I want you to understand. A toast? I wish now for everyone to have a good life always and food for their families and work to do. And peace soon for William. sooner for William than for the rest of the G.I.s. The fighting was over for him now. It feels great to be in a home again. I, I couldn't wait to get out of the hospital. I kept telling the doctors to uh, send me home to Maggie and I'd, I'd heal up a lot faster. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, Pop. Will you always walk with a limp? Uh, no, no. You are a lucky man. The world is not kind to cripples. They make me feel uncomfortable. I feel sorry for them. Well, I just spent a lot of time with uh, guys in a lot worse shape than me. Fellows who, uh, uh, who need more than a cane and uh, are gonna for the rest of their lives, too. You know what I learned? The, the more time you spend with someone, the quicker you forget what they don't have and you learn to like them for, or not like them, <laughs> for who they are, not what they can't do. It's late. They have to work tomorrow. Mama, I'll do that. Sit. Good night, sir. Sir? <laughs> What did I say? Did I oh. say something wrong? The last man who called Papa Sir sold him a car for $50 down payment. And then he repossessed it, and Papa spent 11 years paying off the debt. Oh, 
And your mother just sat there and stared at me. Yeah, mom was a hard one that went over. Like mother, like daughter? What's the matter? Uh, they want us to live here, Bill. Here with them? It would mean a lot to them. Okay. Just for a little while, though, until, uh, until I hear from the university. <laughs> what? Can we go to bed? <laughs> yes. I'm gonna borrow my mom's car and go out to the university today. I'm gonna borrow my mom's car and go out to the university today. Why? Oh, because I got accepted. I got to enroll. The uh, the uh, semester starts at the end of the month. Really? Yeah. What about your leg? I mean, you've only been here for a week. No, I'll be fine. I didn't think it'd be so soon. It's awfully noisy around here. <laughs> They can't tell how loud they are. Yeah, right. I'm gonna go. Maggie? Oh. Maggie? Don't you think you should tell your parents that we're only gonna be here for another week or so? I think we need some time to settle into student housing. What are you doing? I can't exactly yell upstairs, can I? I flick the lights and she knows she's wanted. You'll have to have a little patience with me. I'm still the new kid on the block here. Sorry. I'll see you at dinner. You're not going to tell him today. Well, no, not right now. I'm going to work. Don't worry. I'll tell you. Bye-bye. Hurt badly? I don't know. Uh, the tendons in her hand are torn. She may lose the use of her hand. It's just... It's just one hand? She won't be able to sign. She won't be able to communicate. When a deaf person loses the use of their hand, they're dead of the world. Bill, okay, I'm on. sorry. I didn't understand. A lot of stuff you don't understand. Oh, Maggie, it's not like I'm not trying. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had to go to the hospital. They called me away from work. Nobody could interpret except me. No what, one what can you, help. What are you really saying? Me. I am saying what happens to them when we leave here you want us to live upstairs the rest of our lives no i don't know I didn't they are not going to stop being deaf margaret you can't protect them forever now if you want life with me I'm sorry we don't have time to stay for supper. It's not far, Mama. You'll come visit.
been two months since we got here. It takes a lot of time to settle in, but we're doing our best to make this new place our home. William is swamped with studying. He's made some new friends on campus, and I've been introduced. I only get one day off from work, but in the evenings we meet up, and Bill seems healthy and happy, and I don't know, I think he's even put on a bit of weight. I'll write to you tomorrow, and until then, love, 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 love to you. sleep this late. We had, a, we had a late night. William's been studying for midterms and... Yeah, it's a little cold in here in the mornings. In the afternoon, if the sun comes out, it warms up. <sighs> the drain pipe's broken. Our friends are going to fix it. I tell them about the uh, part. We're waiting for the part. No, no stove. Uh, I don't cook much. <laughs> don't be upset, Papa. We're very happy here. There's not enough room for all the married students. Do you understand, Papa? This is the best we can do. We're just starting out, like you and Mama. Brian! What? <laughs> Don't blame this on William. It's not his fault. He does have pride. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. You can't blame this on no, me. Shush. I don't... <laughs> I don't... No, stop! Yeah, I don't like living wait, like this either. Wait, please! He is taking care of me. It's right to be married. You didn't come all this way for us to fight, did you? What a hearing man can do better. I won't say your words to William. I won't say them. What words? I won't. I won't say them. I wrote to Mama and Papa faithfully, but they never visited again. And Miss 
Mr. Petraka stein that spring. Hmm. We shared so much. I could never have known how much I would miss him. The war finally ended, and William kept at me to go home and visit Mom and Papa. After all, they had a right to know they were going to be grandparents. He said, if the world could work on peace, so could I. <laughs> so like Bill. Our name is next on the list for new housing. We move into a larger apartment soon. William's lucky he got into the university when he did. They're turning people away now. There's no room, especially in engineering. I don't think he'll have any trouble getting a job at all. A few of the big corporations have been interviewing people on campus. Uh, William wants to finish college first before he accepts any offers. No. He's not rich, Mama. He doesn't like turning down work. He wants to get his degree first. My job doesn't bring in much, but we get by. We'll manage when the baby comes. I can't come home. I belong with William. We'll take care of our baby. We are responsible people. I didn't come here to fight. Stop telling me I'm not responsible. My whole life's been yours. Every minute of it. Standing between you and the hearing world. Protecting you, shielding you, hearing insults you never heard. Not translating your angry signs. Because hearing they don't think, deaf get angry, get fed up. And I was too ashamed to speak your anger. You listen to me. I've spent my lifetime listening to the world for you. And it's time you listen to me. To how I feel. You made a little girl go buy a coffin. A coffin for her own brother. You made me stand there and tell that man we have no money. I was 10 years old. I wanted to run away from all those coffins. I wanted to run away from everything. But I couldn't. So don't tell me I'm not responsible. I've been responsible since the day I was born to hear a child. <laughs> was so silent when the only sound in it was mama's crying you were there I could run to you and your voice made me feel like I had a friend like I belonged someplace somewhere out of the Somewhere I could be myself.
I stayed there for over an hour. And I stopped speaking. I only used my hands. I've always used my voice when I sign, even when I'm alone with Mom and Papa. And I never understood why until today. I could never admit to myself how afraid of them I was. Afraid of becoming like them. <laughs> Can't even say it. Afraid of being deaf. Silence has always terrified me. But today, when I was sitting there, I heard silence for the first time, Bill. I saw it. The way the sun came through the window. The look of the grain of the wood in the, in the pews. Wasn't silent at all. Did you go back and tell them any of this? No. I can't. I don't know how. I said things to them no child has a right to say to a parent. I heard them. I don't know if they'll ever forgive me. I gave birth to a beautiful baby boy that summer. I, I sent word to Mom and Papa, but they never came to see him. You're quite a party goer, huh? <laughs> Donald, you want another drink? No, what'd you put in that punch? Oh, I thought you were a big boy now. No, no, no. I'll throw it to Mom, your arms must be numb. Here. Oh, let's see if I can put you down. Never be tired. Yeah, little baby. So tuck it out. Okay. Do you need any help, Maggie? Oh, no, we're fine. Hey, are you all right? Uh-huh. It's a shame her folks couldn't have been at the christening. Mm, yeah. Well, we sent them an announcement. We, uh... Well, Maggie wrote their minister, told them about the baby, but we still haven't heard anything. Uh, I'll get it, I'll get it. Excuse me. Excuse me. Hey, Mom. I'm sorry we're late. I hope we haven't missed the event completely. Not at all. I'm glad you could come. Um... You're always welcome here. Come on in. Um, Maggie's upstairs with the baby. I'll go get it for you. Uh, uh, wait. Oh, wait. They said they would rather go up themselves. OK. Great. Great. Um, right upstairs. To your left. Well, thank you for getting them to come. How'd you manage? Well, I told them your mother was coming and she was going to spoil her grandson rotten. They demanded equal time. <laughs> I understand. I understand. I understand. Everything's good. Oh, everything's good. No. Shh. It's just so cool. <laughs>
We went on like there was nothing ever bad between us. Marshall became the bridge between Mama and Papa and me. A new life and a new hope. This is an I. This is an L I love. Oh, I like you. So what would this be? I love you. That's right, I love you. Why are they deaf, Mommy? Why? They were born deaf. I don't know why. Why do you have red hair? Because you do. It doesn't matter, does it? Thank you. Come here. Why are you such a rascal? Who is that? Papi Lenny! Who is that? That's right. <laughs> You gotta tell your parents about California, right? Today? They can wait. We have a few months. Oh, Maggie, give them a chance, huh? Then you can't figure out everything for them. They got a right to know. We came back home for a party. Hi. Mama had worked all her life in that sewing factory, and now they were going to celebrate her retirement. Friends and family both. She'd never been to a party, and I wondered how she'd take it. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, Poppy. Look, Mommy. I know. Great. <laughs> Tiger. <laughs> oh. Nanny has cookies where? Kitchen. In the kitchen. That's right. She's learning. Folks, <laughs> oh, yeah. could I have your attention here, please? It's uh, my honor to introduce a lady who's actually worked for this company for longer than I have, if that's possible. <laughs> she started out as a young girl doing piecework on the machines. She managed to raise a family, take care of a husband, run a household, and be at work on time every morning. With a perfect attendance record, Mrs. Janice Ryder. day I came to work here, a girl came up to me, she herself was deaf, and she said, do not use your hands, don't sign. The people will laugh at us. At lunch, we ate in the corner away from the hearing people, and we hid our hands and talked as if it were secret, <laughs> as if it were something dirty. And now I see that girl, she's a woman now, sitting with all these hearing people, and she's not hiding her hands. <laughs> no more secrets. <laughs> uh, wait, she has something else to say. On paydays, I always brought my daughter with me. She's hearing. She spoke my words, and she was my ears. She was a little girl. And sometimes when there were big problems, she would fight for me. Always stuck in between. My Margaret. And soon, she'll be moving with her family away from here. And I'm very happy for her. No more between the world and Mama. There have been many changes, good changes. Hearing and deaf must learn to live together, learn together, and change together. I can tell you the deaf side, and even though we're deaf and cannot hear the rain falling, we still listen with our eyes. Hearing people have eyes in their ears. And deaf have ears in their eyes, and they can see the water falling. Silence, for us, is never silent. Please understand, we are listening always. 
with our eyes. to stand up in front of a group of people and tell them how you feel. <laughs> I know how uncomfortable you are around hearing. For years, I've seen your sadness, sometimes your anger. I used to think it was because of me. Every time I hear a noise outside our window, or a, a clock strike the hour, the first sounds that, that woke me up in the morning, and the last ones that lulled me to sleep at night. <sighs> Every time I sat in front of that old radio, I felt like I was taking something away from you. I always wanted to tell you. I'm sorry, I can, I can hear Mama. slowly becoming a different place than the one Mama and Papa knew. Only one thing remained the same. New generations of hands were beginning to learn to sign.